all right what is going on everybody and welcome back to my own nba universe if you missed the last episode go check that out i basically created my own nba universe where we started in the kobe era 2003 spun a wheel for the first draft class every year we will spin a wheel of draft classes to see who will be in the next class and the first one was a 2009 draft class headlined by blake griffin james harden demar derozan and where is he am i tripping or there he is steph curry headline that draft class and the orlando magic ended up taking out the dallas mavericks two six seeds ended up winning i ended up going to the finals and the magic led by kobe bryant were victorious i'm not gonna go through every single roster i will show you the top players so kobe is a member of the magic just won his first ever nba championship t mac is a member of the raptors tim duncan member of the timberwolves shaq is on the hornets kevin garnett is on the sonics jason kidd on the blazers alan iverson got drafted to the 76ers funny enough uh dirk got drafted by the Cavs. uh jermaine o'neal signed with the jazz um in free eight no no he was actually drafted by them um and ben wallace is a member of the jazz after a trade last season so yeah ben wallace was the big trade last year if you don't know um each season if i notice um a team is selling or rebuilding and they have a star player or if there's a, a player on a team that's disgruntled i will i will trade them they will be traded every team is on automatic they can do what they want but uh going into this season let's look at the power ranking and see who they have at top they had the minnesota timberwolves as the best team in the league led by eric strickland eddie jones aaron mckee tim duncan and david robinson together i just noticed that them two are together again but david robinson is 38 and um hey he's not retiring yet they said he shot 14 percent from the field in his first game and shot 38 percent last season um and tim duncan just dropped 40 he is just obviously a beast and number two is the reigning champion orlando magic by far the best team in the league they had the number was it two overall pick in the draft i guess um in real life they had some i forgot what team's pick they had it might have been the suns i don't remember but they drafted blake griffin to play alongside kobe bryant so they have jay williams who's only 22 kobe bryant who's 25 mike miller who's 23 and blake griffin who's 20 and mike dunleavy who hit a game winner to send them to the conference finals last year who is only 23 this team is just by far the best team and has the brightest future in the league this magic team is insane as long as they can keep this core together they have just foster who is only 26 but i mean that's their weakest position number three is the tracy mcgrady led raptors with the 21 year old tyson chandler and they have rookie Drew Holiday running their point guard. Um, and then Portland, Jason Kidd, Shane Battier, uh, Supersonics with Kevin Garnett, and Bobby Jackson, and old Penny Hardaway. So those are the top five teams in the power rankings. We are going to sim to the trade deadline. If you don't know, I only usually, I'm, I'm planning on doing one season per episode just so these videos aren't too long. The only reason why the last episode was long was because it was the intro. We had the fantasy draft and all that. I had to go through every team and then we simcasted some playoff games. So I will see you all at the trade deadline and we'll see what team is selling, what team is buying, what teams are rebuilding. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention uh, the draft class that we rolled last year was the 2019 class headlined by Ja, Zion, Darius Garland. I don't know why Brandon Clark rated number three. Um, yeah, so that is the draft class um, going into this next season. So there, whoever, whoever wins that, whoever wins the Zion, Ja sweepstakes have fun all right we have made it to the trade deadline and somehow the miami heat are the four seed um that oh it's well they could be the three seed right now but uh it's the division um leaders are the top seeds right now but i want to see what this heat team is doing obviously the heat are my favorite team but uh oh yeah they signed elton brand and free agency and he's just straight cooking he's only 24. they have a young core of elton brand baron davis and ak-47 yeah this team is set up and joe johnson this team is set up this team is set up man okay this is a solid team but let's go look to see what teams are selling what teams are buying obviously the heat are buying but their team is fine if they wanted they could really get a center um so i'm gonna look around the league see like the the hornets are buying they really shouldn't be this team is 17 and 27 they should be selling but they do still have Shaq, who's 31 so that might be why they are selling hito is um upset so he could possibly be a trade um piece all right, we see our first selling team. It literally says they are no longer attending and appear to be ready to blow up their roster. And they have a solid big three here. A young core. 
of Ron Artest, Amari Stoudemire, and Corey Maggette. Amari is mad, but he's only in his second year, so, I mean, he won't resign. Is he a free agent? Um, no, he's under contract. I'm not going to trade Amari Stoudemire away from this team. He's under contract. I don't care if he's mad. I mean, it'd be stupid to break up this young core, to be honest with you. I mean, um, Ron Artest signed a four-year deal. Corey Maggette's on a three-year deal. Probably try and get Scottie Pippen the hell out of town. Um, because he's 38, getting overpaid. Um, yeah, I mean, they said they're ready to blow it up, but there's not much they can blow up. Um, if I can find a trade for this team, I will, but I'm not going to split this young core up. Um, unless they really want to get rid of Amari for maybe another young player in picks. But I don't think this young team should be split up. Alright, this is going to be the first trade. Um, Ilgowskis is going to be sent to the Houston Rockets, who are currently the fourth seed. And have a 72 overall at center for... Stromile Swift, I probably said that name wrong. He is 24-year-old power forward. Uh, he is under contract for the next two years on a small contract because the Nets have some bad contracts on the team. He is averaging 14 points, 8 rebounds, a steal, and 2 blocks. He is fantastic. Former second overall pick, 24 years old. They're getting Shannon Anderson just to make the salary cap work. Two first-round picks, one unprotected this year from Utah. Um, at 2005, top 10 protected from Houston. And two unprotected second-round picks. For Ilgowskis, we're going to make this trade go through in the Rockets, continue contending. They get a um, starting center and all-star caliber center. All right, here is the next trade we are going to make. The Bulls are ready to blow it up, and they have two 30-plus-year-old players under contract, uh, Bruce Bowen and Alonzo Mourning. Bruce Bowen is going to be sent to the Timberwolves for Darius Miles, and um, lottery protected 2006 first-round pick and a second-round pick, and Alonzo Mourning is going to be sent to the Orlando Magic for dick daniels mark jackson uh i don't think this is a the right mark jack this is a different mark jackson uh 2004 unprotected first round pick this is this year's pick and this year's second round pick get this trade going through and the bulls get some more draft capital for this rebuild around you guess the steph curry manos nobly is upset he's only in his second year though um, I might up a shot Tennessee because this shot Tennessee is low, but they have Steph Curry and Carlos Boozer to build around. If they can get a solid center or a wing in this draft, this team is set up for the future. And then I think those are the final trades we're going to make. I don't think we need to make any more trades. We can check if trades were made um, just normally without me making the trades. Nope, those I'm the only two trades were the ones I made. Everything's on auto, correct? They should be. Uh, let me go. Trades. Um, this is not automatic. Um, let's see. There, there is like no trades happening. Uh, let me go to team. Why is everything? Never mind. Okay. Well, why? Why? Oh no, these are team features. Never mind. Yeah, everything's on auto. Teams are just not making. What's that? Never mind. Trades are apparently trade um automation is um just not on for some reason. All right, now it's on. Now teams can make trades themselves. I don't know why that wasn't on. But let's check what the all stars are looking like here um let's see where is it all stars so all star participants for the east led by kobe bryant t mac shaq dirk and elton brand um alan iverson jason richardson jamal masburn rashard lewis Pedro stoyakovic antoine walker and jason terry and over for the western conference it's led by jason kidd vince carter kevin garnett tim duncan jermaine o'neal chauncey billups steve francis sean marion two warriors out here um, Paul Pierce, Shreep Abdul Rahim, Pal Gasol, and Gilbert Arenas headline the Western All Stars. And we can take a look at the MVP race. Kevin Garnett is looking for, I believe, this would be his back to back, right? I think he won it last year. Um, yes, Kevin Garnett won the MVP last year, so he's looking to get back to back MVPs, averaging 30 and 15. Kobe's in second place. Shaq, T Mac, and Tim Duncan. Rookie of the year, Steph Curry's averaging 30. He's running away with it. Harden is number two with 16. Um, sixth man of the year, uh, Rafer Alliston and Ricky Rubio as a rookie is in number two. Um, defensive player of the year, Shaq and AK-47. Uh, most improved, looks like he's going to go to Jason Richardson far and away for the Bucks. Uh, and that's what it's looking like. So I'm going to continue simulating. I'll see you at the end of the season. All right. Kevin Garnett wins back-to-back -back MVPs, averaging 30, 15, 7, a steal, and two blocks. My God. Kevin Garnett, he's putting the Sonics on the map. He's making sure this team never gets relocated. Uh, Steph Curry wins your rookie of the year, averaging 30 and 8 on 48, 81, 45 splits. That's absurd. That's got to be like the greatest rookie season ever. Uh, Ricky Rubio, as a rookie, wins your sixth man of the year, averaging 13, 5, and 6. 
Uh, Shaq is your DPOI. Jason Richardson is your most improved. And Tyrone Swift is your coach of the year along with Mame Blake. Uh, he is the coach of the Wizards and she must be the GM of the Wizards. Um, all NBA first team is as seen below. Second team and third team. Curry made an NBA all NBA team as a rookie. The Bulls are in good hands. All defensive first team is as seen below. Same thing with all defensive teams. Uh, all rookie first team. Blake Griffin was second in the rookie of the year voting. 18 and 6 was really good. James Harden averaged 16. Um, and then all rookie second team is as seen below. Here is the playoffs. The Heat sneak in as the four seed. Wizards are the number one. Uh, Magic are number two. Raptors are three. Cavs are six. Bucks are seven. Pacers are five. Sixers are eight. And over on the West, you see it. Kevin Garnett won MVP as the four seed. That's that's nutty. And as you can see, the Hornets were the one seed last year, led by Shaq and MJ. Do not make the playoffs because MJ retired. And the team we built last year, the Utah Jazz, who were the eight seed and made it all the way to the conference finals, are now the three seed. They might be built for a run this year. Let's get simulating and see if we have any game sevens. So the first sweep of the playoffs is the Wizards sweeping the Sixers. Warriors are up 3-0, uh, and they are the only other team up 3-0. The Heat are down 3-1. Cavs are down 3-1. Uh, Utah is down 3-1 to the sixth seed, and Seattle's up 3-1. Let's see what else happens. Uh, let's simulate. The Timberwolves have been eliminated. They have been swept. The Cavaliers have lost in five to T-Mac. The Heat extend the series. And they are the only team that looks like they extended the series. The Kobe is in trouble here in a tied series. Um, let's see what happens. Utah extends their series. Miami Heat lose in six. The Jazz lose in six. And the Bucks end up losing two in a row and are eliminated. That is left with Game 7, Seattle versus Dallas. Uh, actually, this is a... And the Rockets lose in six. We get our Game 7 in the first round between the Dallas Mavericks, the reigning Western Conference champions, and the two-time MVP, Kevin Garnett. Will we have a close game? It is looking like it. Tie game a minute and 11 left. We have been so blessed with these tie games, bro. Alrighty, 104-104, a minute 11 in this game. Penny Hardaway calling for the ball. They give it up into the post with Giles. The third with the ball. Gives it back to Penny Hardaway. Playing the small forward position. Kevin Garnett pulls up the midi and it's off. Marshall, I think that's Danielle Marshall. Grabs the rebound. Gives it up to No Chill Gilbert Arenas. Uh, do I see Gary Payton is on the court? All right, Gary Payton on the court. And Gilbert Arenas straight to the basket. Misses. Joseph's big body self gets the ball. 104-104-40. Five seconds remaining. Small forward Penny Hardaway with the ball. Kicks it up to Garnett. And he's got, oh my God, Daniel Marshall. And he misses with Marshall on him. Gilbert Arenas now head full of steam up the court. Can the Mavs upset? Gilbert Arenas gets fouled. Gilbert Arenas ends up knocking down both free throws. Two point game. 30 seconds left. They get the ball up to Penny Hardaway. Let's see. And they call a timeout. All righty. 20 Seven seconds, the two-time MVP down by two. What will the Sonics do? This is a four or five matchup, so anything can happen. Kevin Garnett with the ball gives it up to Penny Hardaway. Can the Sonics get over the hump? Can they get past the first round? Kevin Garnett gets double teamed. He's still going to shoot it and ties the game. Kevin Garnett double teamed. He's got 42 and 20. All right, I had to turn my air conditioner on because I am dying of heat stroke in here. Eddie Curry going to inbound the ball to, uh, looks like Gilbert Arenas possibly. I haven't seen Gary Payton touch the ball yet so far. 12 seconds left. Looks like they're going to hold for the last shot. Will we see another game winner? Dallas, Gilbert Arenas, five seconds left. You got Gary Payton wide open for three. They're not defending him. He misses. And it's going to OT. And we will be simcasting that. Don't you worry. <laughs> Alrighty, Simcast now. Let's continue simulating. See what happens. Mavs are up by one. Sonics get back. It's still a close game. Minute and a half left. 36 seconds left. 117, 115. Dallas has the ball. Can they tie it? Also notice in the timeouts. The Sonics still have the th Why did you really? We're doing this 2K? Nah, we ain't doing this. We ain't doing this. Uh, whatever, yeah. Simcast live. I'm not sitting through a timeout. All right, now we now we can jump into the game. Um, 
Do they have me playing? They do. Uh, the Supersonics cheerleaders are just Thunder cheerleaders. That's really 2K. <laughs> We're that lazy. Anyways, Mavericks inbound of the ball. 35.9 seconds left. Gilbert Arenas now top of the key. If I was him, I'd run out the clock. You don't need a two-for-one opportunity. Gary Trent gives it back up to Gilbert. He pulls up a fading three. And it's off. And if he can knock down, if Joseph can knock down these two free throws, that will be game. Garnett's got 45 points, 9 assists, and 20-plus rebounds. He knocks down the first, extends the lead to three. Can he get... He misses. The Mavericks still have a chance. Down by three. Gary Trent inbounding the ball. They have 22 seconds. Plenty of time to get a good shot here. The question is, will they, they give it up to Danielle Marshall, who's going to take the two? Interesting. It's still going to be a three-point lead when they end up fouling Bobby Jackson as long as he makes both of these. Very, very interesting move to go for two. They still have plenty of time. Jackson knocks down the first. Can he knock down the second? He does. Once again, a three-point lead. The Mavericks now have no timeouts remaining. Gilbert Arenas with the ball up the court. What is he doing? They're going for two again. And they get it. What, what, what are we doing? Joseph having trouble inbound and gives it up back to Bobby Jackson. Gives it to Penny Hardaway. Bobby Jackson did not want to take those free throws. And now Penny with the two biggest free throws of the game. He knocks down the first. Extends it to two. Will it go back to three? And it does. I mean, the Mavericks, you're all going to have to take a three-pointer at some point. You can't just be playing this free throw game they kick it up they give it up whoever that is and he misses and that is going to do it the supersonics going to move on to the second round of the playoffs and a game seven victory as long as he makes this first and he does bobby jackson with the bucket can he make the next even though this game is over four seconds left he makes it i don't know what the the Mavs are doing just going for twos he had plenty of time to get multiple three-pointers off, and they didn't. And the Sonics are going to win this game 7 in OT to move on to round two in that game. Kevin Garner had 45, 22, and 9. Yep, that's the MVP. His second leading tour had 17 points on 4 for 14 shooting. He put the team on his back, and so did Gilbert Arenas with 37. I just wish he, had, he shot 5 for 8 from 3 and didn't even attempt one. Danielle Marshall had 23 points, 5 blocks, being guarded by Kevin Garnett, may I add. Gary Bain at 21 and 11. After making the finals last year at the age of 35, he comes up short in the first round this year. Sad outing for the Dallas Mavericks. And the second round is set. The one-seeded Warriors versus the fourth-seeded Sonics. Two-seeded Grizzlies, six-seeded Blazers, and one-seeded Wizards versus five-seeded Pacers. And then we the only, besides the 1-4, top seeds, two Magic, three Raptors. We get to see Kobe versus T-Mac, 299 overalls going head-to-head. -head. We'll simulate game by game and see how it goes. Right now, the Warriors are up 2-1. The Raptors are up 3-1 against the defending champions. And Kobe Bryant and the champion magic get eliminated in round two and five games and we we'll, we we will crown a new champion this season wizards are up 3-1 warriors are up 3-1 grizzlies are up 3-2 let's simulate game by game the sonics lose in five kevin garnett mvp season comes to an end at the hands of steve francis and richard jefferson he had a 31 20 and 10 triple double unbelievable from kevin garnett he needs some help there three two here um the and we got a game seven the pacers extend the series to six we have a game seven let's us uh, let's simulate the pacers end up losing i didn't mean to simulate that game but the blazers end up losing in seven it was a close game went to overtime of course it did so uh, sharif abdul rahim drops 33 jason kidd drops 25 and our conference finals are set the one two seeds in the west the one three seeds in the east let's see how it goes the raptors take game one warriors take game one and the raptors take game two uh right now two one in the east three oh in the west but the east is two two currently the grizzlies get swept the one seeded warriors are running through these playoffs sean marion steve francis richard jefferson zach randolph and tyreek evans this team had the 10th overall pick last year and now the one seed in running through these playoffs 
the biggest threat to them was the Sonics. They took one game. T Mac is taking Mr. Steve Nass and Rashard Lewis right now to school. And the Raptors make it so we get a Warriors Raptors NBA Finals. We are 16 years early or 15 years early. And let's see what these two teams are looking like. We are looking at Tracy McGrady, Wally Zerbiak, and Tyson Chandler going up against Steve Francis, Richard Jefferson, and Sean Marion. Let's see. Let's see if these finals are any good. Game one goes to the Raptors by six points. Steve Francis, 32, and Sean Marion's 27 are not enough. For Wally Zerbiak's 35, and T Max near triple double. Game two. Goes to the Warriors in a blowout fashion, 21-point victory. Steve Francis dropped 29, but T-Mac and Wally Zerbiak had no help. T-Mac shot 9 for 25 and foul, uh, did not foul out, but Wally Zerbiak fouled out of the game. Game 3 goes to the Warriors. They take a 2-1 lead. The Raptors' leading score was rookie Drew Holiday. That is not enough. I mean, they are three right here. Their supporting cash isn't good enough, and Sean Marin drops 39 and the Warriors are going to take a commanding 3-1 to one lead with a 3-point victory. T-Mac dropped 36 but had no help once again. Sean Marion, 31-16-6-6. And, six. and then C. Francis, 21. Unbelievable. Simulate. And the Golden State Warriors go on, win three games in a row, I believe, to win the NBA championship. Sean Marion is your finals MVP. They won by one point in this game five. Sean Marion 25, Richard Jefferson 22, and Steve Francis 19. And rookie Tyreek Evans gets the championship. And for the Raptors, T Mac dropped 40 in this game five. Wasn't enough. Wallace Herbeck 19, Tyson Taylor 15, Drew Holiday 14. And the Warriors are your champions. Let's go look at the playoff stats. Let's look at the Warriors first in those finals. I want to see the final stats. Sean Marion obviously averaged 28 and 10. Steve Francis averaged 22, and Richard Jefferson averaged 14. And for the Raptors, I want to see how Drew Holiday played in his first year in the playoffs. He averaged 15 points. He only averaged three assists as a starting point guard, which is not good. He fits more of the shooting guard role anyways. And a steal and a half shooting 50% from the field and nearly 40% from three. For a rookie, that's really damn good. And he only started three games. So that means, yeah, whoever this is started two of those games and played terrible. Uh, but as you can see, Joe Smith, 28% from the field. Jonathan Bender, 36% from the field, 26% for Taj Gibson, who is their starting power forward, and 28% from Sean Bradley, who is their backup center. Just not a good outing for these three. They just backpacked that whole finals, but came up short. And there it is. Now we go through the offseason. We'll start off with the player retirements. Akeem Olajuwon of the Celtics retires. Karl Malone retires with the Miami Heat. That disgusts me. Uh, Charles Oakley retires with the Knicks. Uh, he ended up re I didn't even know he was in this league. He ends up re-signing there uh, after the fantasy draft being signed by um, the, being drafted by the Clippers. Um, Horace Grant retires. Mark Jackson, the real Mark Jackson, retires, and Scottie Pippen retires with the Kings. Staff retirements is as seen in Hall of Fame inductees: Carl Malone, Hakeem, David Robinson also retired. I didn't see that, and Scottie Pippen. And obviously, we're going to see Robinson, Pippen, and Carl Malone's jerseys retired. Historic changes. The Bobcats will be added to the league. Other than that, we just have some um, branding changes. Let's advance that. League meetings. Add one new expansion team. Yup, I will do that. Everything else. Increase shot clock to 45 seconds. That's insane. But I will indeed approve that. Now we go to league realignment. Show all to do it. The Bobcats are now in the Eastern Conference. The, the league is set as is. That is correct. Draft lottery. And where is the expansion draft? Is all the way down here. After the draft lottery. Let's see who wins the Zion sweep six. Right now, the Celtics and the Knicks and the Kings have the best odds. Let's go one by one. Actually, let's not. That's going to take too long. The Sacramento Kings will be drafting either Zion or John Morant to their team after selling at the trade deadline. They get the number one overall pick. Boston Celtics get number two. And the Nets get number three. Now we go to the expansion draft and see who are protected the warriors are going to protect literally everyone i did add i did make it 10 players protected and not eight i feel like it's just easier that way and much better than just having everyone uh so we're just gonna go into the draft and see what happens simulate oh wait i can probably go next election oh uh, yeah i know this bobcat team is gonna be terrible yeah no this team is awful it's a lot of uh auto-generated players they got steve smith though 
Oh yeah, no, that team's awful. That team's awful. That that was expected. They're their expansion team. NBA draft time. The first overall pick will be John Morant. This mic is too close. John Morant goes number one overall to the Sacramento Kings over Zion Williamson. That is insane. John Morant goes number one to the Kings, and that means Zion Williamson is going number two overall to the Boston Celtics. The Brooklyn Nets, I can't really get my mic right. The Brooklyn Nets will draft Bull Bull with the number three overall pick. He's a 73 overall. That is one big of a reach when you have players like Darius Garland still on the board. RJ Barrett. Oh, man, the Nets are not doing good with that pick. Fourth overall pick. And the Bobcats want to trade it for Ron Artest. Oh, do we do this? Because you, if you remember, the Kings were selling. Do Oh, this is tough. The Bobcats will, will get a young player already established for their fourth overall pick. This is, this is enticing. You know what? The Kings, they just drafted John Morant. I think. But, I mean, the Kings could pair Ron Artest. Actually, no, the Kings, will they contend with John? Nah, we're not going to accept that. Let the Bobcats, they draft Darius Garland to be their point guard. We're not going to do that because uh, it wouldn't have made sense. They have Ja, they have um, Ron Artest now to build around. Kevin Porter Jr. goes number five to the New York Knicks. P.J. Washington goes to the Clippers. Eric Pascal goes in the top ten. Oh, dear Lord. The Lakers have had some awful drafts, bro. I forgot who they drafted last year. But Eric Pascal with the seventh overall pick is not good. And the Bulls want to trade for Kerry Kittles and a top three protected first round pick from the Knicks. I wish I could review this. Like, do the Bulls need Kerry Kittles? Um, they have Steph Curry. I don't remember who their shooting guard was. But they are getting a first round pick next year. I'm gonna I'm gonna let that trade go through. I'm going to let that trade go true. The number 8 overall pick for Kerry Kittles to pair with Seth Curry. And a top 3 protected pick next year from the Knicks. The Knicks clearly will not be good. And they're going to draft Brandon Clark. I feel like most of the talent besides RJ Barrett is already gone. Can I see? I can't see um, the rosters right now. Number 9 is DeAndre Hunter. Number 10, another? No. Nope, not happening. Jackson Hayes goes to the Pistons. Uh, Rui Hachimura goes to the Hawks. Number 12... R.J. Barrett falls all the way to 12 to the Phoenix Suns. Number 13, Tyler Hero goes number 13 in this draft to the Nuggets. And the Spurs are going to draft Sekou Dumbuya with the 14th overall pick. This is what it's looking like. I, the, the Kings, I guess they didn't need Zion. Um, the Bobcats get Darius Garland number four as a steal. Why is Eric Pascal a 79? Why is this man? You know, I won't even mess with it. Um, DeAndre Hunter is only a 7. I don't understand how DeAndre Hunter is lower than Eric Pascal. Um, RJ Barrett. Yep. So, no steals right now. Matisse Thibel, 17 to the Cavs is pretty damn good. Um, Daniel Gafford goes 20. Right now, I'm not seeing any big steals. Um, yeah, no. Pretty solid draft besides Bull Bull getting drafted number 3 overall. Uh, so we will go to the rookie signings. You all can sign your rookies. Let's see what that Bulls team looks like and see if that trade was um, good for Kerry Kittles. Um, I mean, yeah, they had Manu who was upset. So now they could trade Manu if they wanted or he could fulfill that six-man role. They have Darius Miles. They could really play one of these two at the... Um, they could play Kerry Kittles at the small forward. So this team with Kerry Kittles at the small forward, look out for them. They just need a center. And we are in free agency this class... Not big. It's headlined by Tony Parker, who should have been restricted, but I guess is not. Um, the Grizzlies are probably going to bring him back. It's headlined by Tony Parker, Pau Gasol, Kenyon Martin, and Steve Nash. Uh, let's simulate a few days in. Uh, eight days to be exact. Uh, Kenyon Martin is still here, and Jay Williams is not getting any offers right now after playing a key role in the Magic Championship. Um, and Kenyon Martin is still a free agent. He does have an offer from the Bobcats, but... Tony Parker re-signs with Memphis long-term on a five-year deal. Pau Gasol re-signs with the Spurs. Steve Nash re-signs with the Wizards. 
AK-47 ends up re-signing with the Heat, even though he's upset. He wanted the money. Mike Miller returns to the Magic. Jamal Crawford ends up leaving San Antonio, going to the Nuggets. Manu is a free agent. He ends up going to the Lakers. He leaves Chicago, sees they drafted. I mean, they traded for a shooting guard. He was upset anyways. He dips out of Chicago, heads to the Lakers. Tony Kukoc signs with the Raptors. Very, very interesting. Let's go to player progression. Can we look at the entire league? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, so, Kobe gets worse somehow. Um, Shaq gets worse. He's 32. Allen Iverson gets better. Tony Parker's a 92, and Dirk is also a 92 overall. Where is Steph Curry? I want to see Steph Curry's progression. He is now he is now an 88 overall. Oh, this Bulls team is about to be nasty. Oh, you know what this means. We got to spin the wheel. All righty. Here we are. We got the wheel set up here. Let's see. So, I got to take out 2009. We already did. And 2019. We already did. So we will remove those from the wheel. And we will spin. Let's see what draft class we get. We are going to get the 2015 draft class, which I believe is headlined by Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell. Alrighty, let's load up that draft class. Use historical draft class to find it. 2015 right here. We're getting a lot of the newer uh players. This league is basically going in reverse. And if we go to check out the scouting, it is the Carl Anthony Towns, Miles Turner is ranked number one for some reason. Uh, Chris Stapps, D'Lo, Justice Winslow, Cat. Let's see if some of these players like Justice Winslow can turn around their career in this universe and become stars. Anyways, that's going to be for me. Leave a like, guys, enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new. GG.